uh, we continue our discussion on metal semiconductor contacts and metal source chain junction MOSFETs. Last time we discussed the principle of operation of a metal semiconductor contact. We took a case where the work function of metal is greater than the work function of semiconductor. So, this is the situation under thermal equilibrium and there is a depletion layer in the semiconductor and a negative charge here plus charge in the depletion layer. Okay, so, this is because of the because electrons are transferred from the semiconductor to the metal because the phi m work function of the semiconductor is larger. So, Fermi level the level there is usually below the Fermi level of semiconductor. So, electrons get transferred from semiconductor to the metal. So, we get this is the distribution of current uh, carriers, this is the barrier phi b n, the electrons which have energy above this barrier can cross there giving rise to a current I naught. Now, thermal equilibrium there is no current. So, the electrons on this side which are above the barrier, here the barrier is V b i, they are crossing it here. So, the those two uh, cancel each other and we have shown that that current I naught or current density J naught is given by this term which finally, is A star. A star is called Richardson's constant which depends upon the effective mass of electron with respect to the free mass 120 m that is 120 m n star by m, m naught T squared mean compo uh, various dependence dep on temp on the uh, of the current depends upon the barrier head. If barrier is more this is less term it is minus phi b n by k t. If the barrier is low this is large current. Okay. Now, thermal equilibrium you saw that they are equal number of carriers crossing each other and that is cancelling as J naught. We also saw the forward bias condition I am sorry reverse bias condition where you make this plus. Now, notice the entire voltage appears across the depletion layer. So, the barrier height which was V b i on this side has increased by V b i plus B r. So, the potential energy of this conduction band here brought down by an amount equal to V r. So, the energy distribution because the electrons do not have kinetic energy here. So, you reduce the potential energy. So, kinetic energy is up to that particular distance is fixed by the temperature. So, these electrons find a much bigger barrier much more than what was there in thermal equilibrium. Therefore, these electrons from semiconductor are not able to cross to the metal. Now, on this this is a very important point you must note on the metal side the barrier height has not changed. This is the difference between the p n junction and the metal semiconductor contact. In the p n junction the total barrier height changes potentially variation takes place both on the n side and p side. There is no drop in the metal in the case of uh, there is no voltage drop in the metal uh, in the short key barrier contact metal semiconductor contact. Since there is no voltage drop the potential here is same the barrier height is same thing that is the important thing. So, whenever I apply voltage to a metal, sem metal semiconductor contact if I make the semiconductor plus the barrier height on the semiconductor will increase preventing the injection of electrons from the semiconductor to the metal. So, whatever you get a current, current direction is from plus to minus like that I naught that is due to the these electrons which are having energy above the barrier on the metal side. So, these electrons still can cross these do not get confused from the arrow, the arrow is for the direction of electrons a direction of current electron flow is from here to here. The by convention you know that negative charge if it moves in x direction current flow is in the minus x direction. If plus charge moves from the minus to plus current direction is also same thing. Okay. So, I m s the symbol is current is I due to transfer of electrons from metal to semiconductor that is the notation. So, this has not changed because this barrier height has not changed distribution has not changed. So, I naught remains the same thing. So, you get a current whatever you got I naught there. Previously, whatever I naught was coming due to this transfer of electrons from the metal to semiconductor was getting 
balanced by the current injection from the electron injection from the semiconductor to the metal. But since that is removed, there is only current component due to the transfer of electrons from the metal to semiconductor that is IMS going in that direction. And that we have estimated how much it is a star t square d to the power minus 5 n by k t. So, this you can say it is like a p n junction almost the the magnitude of current will be different decided by the barrier height 5 n in this case. Okay. So, the in the p n junction reverse bias means n side positive with respect to p side metal n type semiconductor same notation if metal semiconductor is made plus the current flow is from is less and that is the reverse saturation current. Okay. Now, let us see what happens if you followed by that, but please remember whatever bias I apply to this metal semiconductor contact this barrier phi b n is not going to change. So, the electrons injected from the metal to semiconductor totally decided by how much is the barrier rate barrier is. So, how much if the barrier is very low almost all, all of them will be available for current flow. If the barrier is high, very little will be the current flow in this case. Okay. Now, forward bias again remember this would not change. If a forward bias thermal equilibrium this five a Fermi level was the same level. See in the previous case the Fermi level has come down quasi Fermi level because the entire energy levels have come down, but here from the thermal equilibrium you made this plus of the on the metal side this is minus. So, the potential barrier across this which was plus minus because of the plus minus on the opposite side that is reduced by v, v applied. Okay. Now, what happens earlier this distribution was just coming up to this end. Now, because of the forward bias the potential energy at the conduction bandage has gone up. So, this distribution remains the same thing. So, some of the electrons which are above this particular uh, line dotted line see dotted line above this barrier can go from left to right electrons whatever electrons are there from the dotted line up to the peak they can cross from the right. So, that there are more electrons now crossing from semiconductor to the metal. Now, how will this current vary? This current varies as J is current due to the transfer of electrons from semiconductor to the metal. Actual direction is from current flow direction is from metal to semiconductor, electron flow is from semiconductor to the metal. Okay. That is why this sum is given like that. That is number of electrons on surface into velocity, velocity thermal velocity root k t by some number that we have seen already. Okay. So, only n s number of electrons actually will be whatever carry concentration here is there into e to the power of the potential difference n, n 0 is the carry concentration here where neutral region into e to the power of minus q barrier now originally it was v b i now it is v b i minus v because of forward bias by k t. So, what is n n 0 e to the power of minus v b i that was electron concentration which was present under thermal equilibrium situation at this point. Now, that is raised by an amount equal to v e to the power of v by 2 v by v t. So, what you have to remember is whatever thermal equilibrium carry concentration was there here it has raised by e to the power of v by v t. So, current has gone up whatever thermal equilibrium j naught was there has gone up by an amount of e to the power by v by v t. So, what you have got is this current due to transfer of electrons from the semiconductor electrons transferring from the semiconductor to the metal that is I m s that remains the same thing, but I s m that is current due to the transfer of electrons from the semiconductor to the metal transfer is like that current flows in that direction that has gone up exponentially. How much it has gone up depends upon how much is the voltage. So, what you say may imply is this current is J naught e to the power of V by V t, like in the case of forward bias p n junction diode. 
whatever j is not in there, it will be by Vt. And this current is due to that, that is present that is in the opposite direction. So, total current is from the metal to the semiconductor. In fact, from the plus side, it comes like this. Battery is driving the current. That is, Jsm current density is Jsm minus Jms. Jsm is J naught e to the power of V by Vt, and current due to transfer of electrons from the metal to semiconductor is J naught itself. You subtract that. So the current is J naught into e to the power of V by Vt minus one. Okay, this is what I have written here. It's like exactly like the case of diode, there is no difference. The only thing is the J naught term in this case will be different from the J naught term in the diode case. We will see what it is. Once again remember this barrier heat has not changed because of forward bias. Because of forward bias the current flow has increased because of increase in the electron injection from the semiconductor to the metal. In the case of p n junction the current increases because of hole injection from p to n and electron injection from n to p. But in this case whatever electron is injected remains the same thing that is this quantity remains the same thing j naught. So, it is the this component which is actually gone up due to increase in the electron injection from the semiconductor to the metal. Okay. In the reverse bias direction only that j naught is there which is due to the injection of electrons from the metal to the semiconductor there is nothing from the semiconductor injected. Please note if I have to have electron injection from the metal to the semiconductor, whatever electrons are there above this barrier I can only inject. If I want to increase that electron current injected, this is important for MOSFET action. In the MOSFET n channel, you have n plus source which injects electrons. Here you have metal, if it has to inject electrons to the channel, n channel, this barrier must be small because only those electrons which are above the barrier can get injected whatever is here is going in the opposite direction. Let us see then. Now, if it is a reverse bias, if the potential you reduce here, this cannot inject electrons back. This is the theme of uh, basic uh, ground for the MOSFET. Now, okay. now, just see the IV characteristics. J naught depends upon J naught depends upon S dot T square to power minus 5 n by k t. These are constants for a given temperature, it depends upon phi b n. So, I v characteristics, it is a rectifying diode, j naught is small, if the barrier heat is large, okay, number of electrons which are having energy above that barrier is small. So, a high barrier height which you get when phi m is larger than phi of s for n type semiconductor, you get a rectifying, you get i is equal to i naught is equal to v by t and I naught will be low, it will be low because phi bn is large that is the J naught and the current is exponentially increasing. Now, if the barrier height is low, the reverse saturation current is large, I naught is large. If I naught is large, I naught into that quantity is large. So, this will be the characteristic of this diode with a smaller barrier height. So, if a larger barrier height is there you get a good rectifying junction, very large barrier height you can get the current reverse current close to 0 or nano to pico. High barrier height there will be large current in the forward direction exponentially increasing, reverse bias current will saturate at j naught a large value of j naught. Okay. I naught is high when phi b n is low which is the one that you may be looking for in a MOSFET action. Because I not in the reverse bias condition is due to injection of electrons from the metal to the semi semiconductor. Now, let us have a more detailed uh, graph. There are a number of graphs I have plotted here. Large phi b n I naught is low. As increase the phi b n, uh, reduce the phi b n, reverse current keeps on increasing the reverse direction is keep, keeps on increasing. On the positive side, even the smaller we applied voltage will give large current. Smaller phi b n, the current is like that. In fact, the same graph I have shown number of them. 
keep on reducing phi b n you get more and more current and you see ultimately when phi b n is very low if you look at the characteristic at the source end that is almost linear there that is voltage drop is very little you can have large current flow that is close to an ohmic contact. So, phi b n very small indicates that, that you get a ohmic contact phi b n large gives you rectifying contact. Okay. Now, what you have said is phi b n is phi m minus chi. So, if phi m higher you must get lower barrier height more closer to rectifying ideal rectifying characteristics. Okay. So, now let us see the next slide comparison between the p n junction and the metal semiconductor contact. This is a very good comparison property I v characteristics you take both of them have the same type of uh, same type of expression j equal to j naught e to power v by v t minus 1 j equal to j naught e to power v by v but what is the difference in the characteristics? J naught in this case is a star Richardson's constant is 120 into m star by m naught in silicon it is almost equal to 1 t uh, 120 gallium arsenide is about 8 t squared into exponential this quantity. Okay. Now, in the case of semiconductor it is proportional to n i squared. So, I have got a constant which is depend is decided by the doping etcetera. Okay. But the exponential term n i squared is e to the power of minus e g by k t. Now, let us see the mean contributor to the reverse current is this exponential term saturation current. In the case of p n junction it is exponential e to the power of minus e g by k t. And for silicon E g is 1.1 electron volts, for gallium arsenide it is 1.43 electron volts. So, you can immediately say that the J naught is between the silicon and gallium arsenide junction. Gallium arsenide junction will have much lower, much lower J naught because E g is larger there. Between metal semiconductor contact and this p n junction, if you take silicon E g is 1.1 and barrier height will be let us go back and see thermal equilibrium if you see the barrier height phi b n is much smaller than the band gap phi b n is this much band gap is you can see from here to here. So, even if this formula will come down here it will come closer and closer to e g, but always less than e g. So, if you go to this particular expression where we have comparison this is 1.1 electron volts this is something like 0 0.6 0 0.7 electron volts. So, this will be this this particular quantity will be larger compared to that e to the power of minus 1.1 by k t e to the power of minus 0.7 by k t. So, this will be larger. So, always the reverse saturation current in the metal semiconductor contact will be higher than that in the case of p n junction. Okay. Now, current in forward bias condition in the case of uh, p n junction current in a forward bias diode is due to injection of holes from the p type to n type injection of electrons from the n type to p type the barrier height for both holes and electrons will be reduced in the case of p n junction in the case of uh, metal semiconductor contact the current flow in the forward direction it do is dominated by injection of electrons from the n side region to the metal. Okay. So, phi b n does not change. So, the electron injection from the metal to semiconductor does not change it corresponds to the j naught term. Okay. Now, if you want to see the different uh, uh, this is a thing that I can you can see it at one shot metal and type semiconductor thermal equilibrium is like that forward bias more electrons are injected from semiconductor to the metal whereas, the electrons injected from the metal to the semiconductor do not change that is this arrow to the left. 
smaller arrow. And when you go to reverse direction bias, you make n region plus nothing, no electrons are getting injected from the semiconductor to the metal because they do not have the energy to go above the barrier. All that you have current is due to injection of electrons from this metal to semiconductor that is J naught itself. So, J naught, J naught it for V by V t, no current. Now, before I go further into this, I just want to show how the, the currents in various devices will be. Okay. If I draw the voltage versus current, okay. If I compare P n junction silicon with P n junction or uh, with a metal semiconductor junction rectifying, P n junction with silicon will be going like this exponential. Reverse very little, very little going to 0. And in the case of metal semiconductor contact, okay what will happen? Barrier is low, so current is more, reverse current is more, I am sorry, reverse current will be more passing through that, it will go like that and it will go like this. These two are two not the same scale forward and reverse. This is the metal, this is the p n junction. Okay? Suppose, p n junction silicon, this is silicon, this is metal silicon. Suppose, I take gallium arsenide, the gallium arsenide p n junction that will be like this. The E g is larger, therefore, reverse saturation current will be even smaller, that is the gallium arsenide. P n junction. So, if we make a p n junction in gallium arsenide, it will have more cutting voltage, cutting voltage of almost about uh, you know silicon it may be about 0 0.7 volts, gallium arsenide it may be close to about 1 volt, 1 electron, 1, 1 volt. Okay. So, you will have the that is the voltage. So, this is gallium arsenide. Now, if I make a metal semiconductor contact in gallium arsenide, that will be somewhere higher than this, because you can get higher barrier height in that compared to the silicon. So, that will be M s contact with gallium arsenide. So, in the gallium arsenide, you can make metal semiconductor contacts much more effectively than in silicon. If you want to make uh, JFET, they use metal semiconductor contact in gallium arsenide because you can get cutting voltage something like in this case uh, V gamma cutting voltage. Okay. For that case, will be something like about uh, 0.6 volts close to that of cutting voltage of a silicon p n junction, this one, this is a gallium arsenide metal semiconductor contact. That is because when V g is higher, you get a barrier height which are higher than what you get in the case of silicon. Okay. So, that is the idea that you can think of. Now, let us get back to this. So, having said that, if you want to inject electrons into n channel, you must have smaller barrier height that will go into that n channel MOSFET if you want to make. Okay. In the case of conventional, just on a schema, schematic diagram, in the case of conventional MOSFET, this is the channel, blue is the channel, red is the oxide, above that I have the metal and p type substrate, I am talking of silicon junction, silicon MOSFET, 
n plus source, n plus strain, n channel. When I apply plus voltage, I can invert it. Now, when I apply plus voltage to the gate, there is a depletion layer below this, and this potential is at plus twice phi f when it is inverted. Surface potential is plus phi f. That means, between the ground and this channel beginning, there is plus twice phi f. This junction is forward biased. That means, the barrier whatever barrier was there originally, I am just showing it still as vertical, but it will go okay. that barrier will be whatever built in potential is there minus twice phi f. So, originally the barrier was built in potential and if there is no inversion, if there is no voltage appearing between the source and the channel, barrier height between the channel and the source is built in potential. Now, because there is a plus twice phi of voltage here because of gate voltage at the channel, the potential difference there is V b i minus twice phi f forward by stay out. As I was mentioning earlier, when you invert the channel, the source is getting force junction is getting forward by twice phi f. So, barrier height is V b i minus twice phi f. That means, the whole electrons can easily get injected across that. I am just showing still that distribution of electrons from the Fermi level up to that like that in the n type region. So, you can see lot of electrons get injected here. If I increase the okay, twice phi f quite a bit of electrons can be injected into channel. Now, from here to here when I apply a drain voltage VDS, VDS okay, whether there is depletion layer at the drain end or not, there is a drop or <coughs> there is from this source end to the gate end there is a voltage rise. There is gate end is at a plus voltage with respect to source end. That means, if I draw the energy band diagram that will be going down like this, plus is at lower end compared to minus, okay? which means this is plus, this is minus. I put it at lower electron, lower energy in electrons because plus and minus here, electrons can easily go from the minus to plus, but they can attract it to plus. So, that is another way of looking at that. So, whatever electrons are injected here go down into the along the channel the drift electric field from minus to plus and they collected. How much current flow is there here depends upon how much charge is present here because of the gate voltage. Also, how much is the barrier height here? The barrier height is reduced by twice f. There is quite a large of reduction in the barrier height. So, entire current is controlled by the gate, gate voltage. More gate voltage, more charge and whatever is collected here can be supplied from the source end because there is a reduced barrier height is there. Now, let us take a look at the metal semiconductor contact on the right hand side. <coughs> See, it is very interesting to compare this. Okay. This is what makes makes it difficult for the technologies to realize metal source, metal source drain, metal source, uh, source metal drain, drain junctions, metal contact here. Here as you already have seen, whatever I do on between the channel and the gate uh, source, that barrier height whatever was there 5 bm is not going to change that going to remain in the same thing. Whatever I apply minus twice phi f I do here. Okay. See, in this case the minus twice phi f was reducing the entire barrier. In this case, if I do minus twice phi f that is reduced here only. This barrier it is reduced here on the n side. So, this is reduced okay, plus minus here and that is across this depletion layer there. There is a small depletion layer that is whatever twice phi f is appearing across that nothing here. So, that means, number of electrons available here are fixed by the barrier head by B n. Okay. This distribution is fixed by temperature. So, when the barrier head is if, the, if it is a rectifying contact, the barrier head is high. So, this number of electrons available for transporting from the metal to the semiconductor are only in the, that, that small region. Okay. So, here whatever charges are here, this portion is same as this. 
there is a voltage drop from here to here because of current flow. So, the energy band diagram is like this. So, electrons reaching here will flow in that direction get collected by the rain. There is no issue on that thing. Okay? Because there is downhill there. It can be collected here. Okay? So, now the point that you would see here is if this is not able to supply okay, whatever charges are in inverted here it is getting collected, but the rate at which the current can flow is ultimately limited by how much it is this can supply. If the barrier height is let us say almost like there very high nothing can collect there is no injection of carriers because of barrier for electrons in the source region is limited by the barrier height. I am sorry number of electrons that can cross this barrier depends upon the barrier height. More the barrier height more electrons are available. So, the moral of the story is if I want more number of electrons available here to be injected I must have this barrier height reduced phi b n must be lower and phi b n is low as you keep on getting lower and lower ultimately what you saw was you get here. If I keep on reducing the barrier height if you see this graph here heavy characteristics I move along this line ultimately you get ohmic contact. So, ideally what you would like to have here would be you would like to have this as a ohmic contact or phi b n as low as possible phi b that is the barrier height with respect to the channel not with respect to p region. What we are concerned is the barrier height between the metal and the n region which is the inner channel region. So, what we are looking for is a metal semiconductor contact at the source end which will which will give phi b n as low as possible. Now, let us see whether we can get that by changing the work function. If you look at the uh, this characteristics here. Here, I just go back to those slides. See here. Here, you had taken phi m much larger than phi of s. That is a metal which has got large work, work function. Means the Fermi level is at a much lower level compared to the Fermi level of the semiconductor phi s small means the work function of the semiconductor is smaller that is between the between the vacuum level and the Fermi level in semiconductor the energy difference is less compared to the energy difference between the vacuum level and the uh, Fermi level in the semiconductor. So, now let us see what happens instead of I want to reduce the barrier height. Okay. So, that there is supply is there. What will happen if I get phi m less than phi of s? See, if this phi m were large, that would have been here, that would have been here. Then the electrons would have got transferred from the semiconductor to the metal, giving rise to a depletion layer that gave it rectifying. Here, phi m is small compared to what is phi m from a vacuum level to the Fermi level, that is smaller compared to this difference between the energy of the vacuum level and the Fermi level in semiconductor. So, when you connect them together in the system what you will have will be electrons will be get transferred to from the metal to the semiconductor till the two Fermi levels are equalized. So, that is the situation electrons have got transferred from the semiconductor to the metal. In metal there are already lot of large number of electrons. So, if you transfer electrons from the semiconductor to the metal, there will be an accumulation layer. See, more number of electrons have got transferred from the metal to semiconductor, there will be a small charge sheet, there is no depletion layer. If it has to be depleted, the electrons have to be transferred from semiconductor to the metal. But now, because of the higher Fermi level here, electrons get transferred from the metal to the semiconductor. So, this surface gets more negatively charged, this surface gets more positively charged that is the situation. So, you got plus charges here 
and those plus charges you can put it as the electron density there are plus charges, but electron uh, distribution is like this in the metal electron distribution semiconductor is like this. Okay. So, that is in thermal equilibrium there is no barrier here, because this is accumulation accumulation means very little band bending you know that accumulation we used to take phi s is equal to 0, but it is not 0 slightly negative here. So, very small barrier if the electron okay, very small bending so barrier heat only this much phi b n can be made very very small again determined by the difference between the phi m and chi f s. Okay. Chi f phi f s phi m minus chi f s is negative so barrier heat is this much small only. So, the electrons here all so many electrons have energy above that here so many electrons are there. If I apply voltage to this either way, okay, if I apply either way voltage, there is very small movement here. So, there can be large current flow. See the it is difference between the two is previous case this there was a big barrier here. Here there is no barrier for either case, very small barrier. So, if I apply plus here or minus here, there is large transfer of electrons from metal to semiconductor or semiconductor to semiconductor metal. So, this is the way to go. So, what we are telling is why do you choose? metal with high work function choose a metal with low work function. For example, if I take aluminum work function is 4.05 and phi of s in semiconductor is 4.05 practically no barrier. So, you will be very happy if everything is fine you will say that the uh, your uh, you can have ohmic contact if I have aluminum on to the surface of the n type semiconductor or as a source of the n channel MOSFET. Okay. So, now let us see if I have p type substrate, because after all if you take n type substrate you get when you invert you get p type surface, if I take p type substrate you get this type of n channel. Now, let us see what, what about the p type substrate, in fact whatever we have discussed I am not getting down into this. Supposing the phi m is less than that of phi f s like in this case in the p type if it were p type what would happen formula will be even below phi m less than phi f s electrons will get transferred from the semiconductor uh, metal to the semiconductor if it is a p type thing if electrons get transferred from the metal to the semiconductor there will be depletion layer. So, if phi m is less than phi f s you will get a depletion layer here and that will be rectifying. So, thing to remember is if you if when you make the contact if there is a depletion layer in the semiconductor you can change that depletion layer width and the potential barrier in semiconductor you can go you can change the barrier height in semiconductor that is rectifying. If I have a phi okay, so if there is no depletion layer if there is accumulation layer then that is ohmic contact. So, what exactly by the same argument I am not getting down into that you can return in figure in this case electrons will get transferred from this metal to semiconductor introducing depletion layer that will give us a depletion layer. So, by applying a voltage you can change the barrier height so it will be rectifying contact. If phi m is greater than the chi of s okay, if phi m is greater than phi of s in the case of p type material this is way down you will transfer electrons from there to there or you will get a you will get just like exactly reverse okay. in the n type semiconductor by phi m is greater than phi of s you have got electrons transfer from the, the semiconductor to uh, from the metal to semiconductor dip causing depleting. The opposite is true in, in the case of p type semiconductor if the phi m is larger than the phi of s okay, you will have accumulation layer in the case of p type semiconductor. So, the sum up is to summary of this discussion phi b n is phi m minus chi that is the ideal and if phi m is high phi m minus chi is high. So, rectifying contact in n type semiconductor what is phi bp? I do not know whether I pointed it out to you let me go back to that and show you this is phi bp. 
So, take a look at this from if there is a hole here that is a electron is absent there to take the hole above this to the other side that has to cross this barrier head. So, the important thing to understand is if an electron is at this end to take it here you have to spend energy. So, a hole at the near the Fermi level if you are talking about taking it to the above this point up to this point is equivalent of taking an electron from this point to that end. That means, to take an electron from here to here you have to, you have to spend energy that is higher energy for electrons. Same thing if I have to take a hole from here that is Fermi level to this edge of the gap barrier right you have to spend energy. Okay. So, this is barrier for holes and here the barrier for electron is that. So, when you go back to other diagrams here this is the barrier for the electrons and that is the e g band gap band gap minus phi b n okay, band gap minus phi b n that is phi b n is that total is band gap that minus phi b n is phi b p. Okay. So, that is if you do not get it see if I have the energy band diagram like this. the energy band diagram is like that let us say that is n type. Okay. Now, that is the barrier head. That is the barrier head for electrons and this is by B P barrier head for holes because it, dif it is difficult to take if you have to spend energy for plus charges that is this is the higher energy for electrons that is the higher energy. Okay this is higher energy for holes. So, this is the phi b p and phi b p you can see is the band gap e g phi b p express in electron holes minus phi b n. So, you can see that if phi b n is high phi b p is always low. If some process gives you higher phi b phi b n that gives you lower phi bp. This is something which you must remember. Okay. Now, let me go further down. So, phi b n if phi m is larger than chi phi b n is high. At the same time you can see if phi m is larger than chi phi bp is low because if phi b n is high phi bp is low. Okay. So, you get phi m is larger than chi phi of s or chi you get uh, rectifying contact in the n type material or n channel, but then for the same work function difference phi b p because if phi m is large this is large e g minus that large quantity will be small phi b p will be small that will be OB contact in the p type substrate. So, if you get very easy to remember if you get rectifying contact with the p type material n type material or n channel device you will get ohmic contact in the p type material or p channel. So, low phi m phi m minus chi low value of phi m minus chi gives low phi b n that gives ohmic contact on n type material rectifying contact on p type 
So, now what will you say? So, if I want to make a this ideal theory tells us that I would choose a metal with a low over function to make ohmic contact with the n channel because that can inject lot of carriers. If I have a p channel, I will make a high work function material here that is ideal. Now, whole thing is under the assumption that phi b n is phi minus chi that was the most ideal case. Now, let us get down to our requirement experimental results on phi b n for metals with different phi m. <coughs> you can see this slide you can see that measurements on phi b n there are some ways of measuring by the i v characteristic etcetera or c v i phi b n showed that the first order theory whatever we have mentioned is not correct phi b n equal to phi minus chi is not satisfactory ok. That is the phi b n all these dots are measure ones the crosses are the measured phi b n by making the measurements on metal semiconductor contacts either C v or I v it will give you that you can extract that. So, what they did was they had <coughs> silicon <coughs> which was freshly cleaved you can just cleave a silicon material you can just apply some pressure it will cleave along a particular plane and freshly cleaved means what if I have the thing which is cleaved I have got the surface which is free I have the surface of the semiconductor which is just cleaved that means there are a lot of dangling bonds there that will tell you that that surface has lot of surface states it is not ideal ideal case there are no surface states when we discussed the ideal metal semiconductor ideal metal semiconductor contact theory assumption was that there are no dangling bonds there are no surface states when you have an oxide layer there it is the same surface state which you call it as call it as an interface state because it is the same surface state manifests that as the interface state. All, all, many of the dangling bonds are satisfied by the oxide there are still some of them which are not satisfied that is called interface state. So, freshly sleeved absolutely see this is on the x axis you have the work function corresponding to aluminum, silver, copper and gold all these cross x. So, the phi b n is about 0 0.8 almost about two thirds of e g. So, that means, once you have fixed the e g for silicon that was fixed ok that is freshly cleared thing, but it gives a clue that there are large dangling bonds which are responsible for that the surface states are responsible for this. So, if you are able to remove those then you are in business. <coughs> now, what they did was let us see that is, let us cleave the surface give a chemical treatment for example, if you clean it with the uh, HN HCl H 2 O 2 solution and ammonium hydroxide and, and H 2 O 2 solution then what you get will be a surface which has a layer of oxide a thin layer of oxide will be there even when you put it in H end like that R C A 1 R C A 2 because of that H 2 O 2 action there will be some amount of oxide. Now, when you very very thin layer may be less than a, a nanometer few angstroms <coughs> 1 nanometer is 10 angstroms couple of angstroms that is sufficient it passivates some of those dangling bonds. So, when you do that and put a metal you can see the barrier height has gone down is changed and as you increase the work function you expect phi m minus chi chi is same for silicon phi m minus chi increases at increase and that increases linearly. We are very happy that it obeys the law of phi m minus chi, but the change in the phi b n say from 4.2 you change it to 4.7 
or 4.75 around that for gold. Let me take 4.2 to 4.7 that is that is about 0.5. I should have got as per our theory the 5 n should have increased by the same extent that is 0 0.5 electron volts. But if you see here it is about 0 0.5 here it has gone up and become 0 0.8 instead of increasing by 0 0.5 electron volts it has gone up only by 0 0.3 still not satisfactory. It changes with 5 m as we are happy that first order theory is ok, but it does not change as much as 5 m. Let us see other materials <coughs> is it characteristic of silicon alone same thing they did with gallium arsenide. Gallium arsenide results on cleaved 110 gallium arsenide cleaved there are slight dependence 5 m varied from about 4 right up to about 4.8 it changed hardly 0 0.2 electron volts. So, when it when you change it by about 1 electron volts close to 1 electron volts phi m your phi beam changes hardly about 0 0.2 electron volts. But again the indication is there on the dependence of phi beam on phi m, but not as much as you expect. Chemically prepared thing see here this is just freshly cleaved in the case of silicon it was flat here is slight dependence was there may be the surface state number is less in that 110 plane. Okay. Now, another surface 111 or it is a family there they chemically prepared chemical treatment you give. Okay. Then, when 4 to 4.8 when you change it increases from instead of 0.8 electron volts increase in 5 n it increases something like about 0.3 electron volts. So, still almost a linear variation is there with 5 m but not as much as you would expect. Everything points out that if there are interface state densities are high the phi b n will become independent of phi m, but if the interface state densities are reduced to some extent by some passivation it will become proportional to phi m, but not as much as there is a proportionality constant a factor which is not equal to 1, but less than 1. Now, let us see. So, we have seen silicon, we have seen gallium arsenide, <coughs> let us see germanium. <coughs> okay. Germanium, if you see, why we are taking a look at germanium is this is the one material which they are trying to use for making the MOSFET with metal semiconductor contact. They are using germanium <coughs> because of its much higher electron mobility compared to silicon, much higher hole mobility compared to silicon. If you go to gallium arsenide, <coughs> electron mobility is much higher compared to that of silicon. Hole mobility is not, it is almost same as that of hole mobility in silicon, but in germanium you get both of them by a factor of 2 to 3 higher. So, let us people have made metal semiconductor contacts with germanium varying the work function from right from about 2.5 to about 5.5 or more platinum from cesium metal to platinum. You can see they are all over the place the squares are the measured see it's, if you put the thing together it does not follow any rules, but I can draw or at least if it is phi m minus chi this should have been the dependence taking the chi of germanium that is also about 4.05 close to that of silicon and if I had phi m okay, you can see 4 and 4.5 means that should have been somewhere 0 0.5 electron volt this point 0 0.5 because corresponding that 4.5 minus 4.05 that is 0 0.5 would have been the barrier head. You do not get that. If I take 3 electron volt I must have got it somewhere down here, but you get almost like this. <coughs> so,
So, just some quick uh, thing we will get back to this later on to examine that I can draw a straight line like this saying it is almost flat compared when I am using hafnium, titanium, nickel etcetera it is almost flat close to about uh, uh, slightly less than 0.6 electron volts. Remember the band gap of uh, germanium is 0.66 electron volts. Okay. In the case of silicon we had 1.1 electron volts and you had the barrier height flat coming to about 0.8 electron volts that is about two thirds of that. In the case of germanium band gap is 0.66 electron volts. So, what you get is slightly less than 0.66 electron volts that is uh, below 0.6 electron volts. Okay. But I can draw a flat line like this or if I am more optimistic let us say it is dependent on phi m I can draw this line leaving out hafnium and nickel and tantalum I can draw these lines as straight line and say okay, there is still some phi m dependence. Okay. So, this is the phi m here and this we will come back to discuss this is the band gap E c minus E v and phi m is there for that case see very high this thing here. So, this we will discuss there is a neutral level neutral level is very close to valence band that is the indication of that. So, these two this is actually the ideal theory the dotted line that theory was uh, given by Bethe and Schottky and barrier height was called Schottky barrier what whatever phi b n we are talking of was called a Schottky barrier because of name of Schottky who named it. So, that is the Schottky limit we would have got phi m minus chi means it is Schottky limit and Bardeen said it will be independent of phi m it will be having certain value decided by the neutral level in the Fermi level uh, surface. So, that is the Bardeen, Bardeen limit due to strong pinning limit surface pinning Fermi level pinning limit the all that what is there we will be able to discuss later. So, from these things one can fit in a graph like this I will just discuss this how this comes up and what are the implications of that more details we will take up in my next presentation. So, what we have concluded from these experimental results is phi b n can be expressed by a relation ideal case it is phi minus chi. In the practice I can express phi b n as gamma times phi minus chi plus 1 minus, chi, 1 minus gamma times e g minus phi naught because you saw that depends upon e g minus phi naught. Okay. So, gamma equal to 0 or gamma equal to 1 second term is 0 gamma equal to 1 phi a minus chi that is the ideal case first order theory. When gamma equal to 0 first term ideal theory is gone and 1 minus gamma equal to 1 e g minus phi naught. So, we can say that when high freshly cleaved surface gamma was equal to 0 therefore, first term went off and you got a term which is independent of phi m. Okay. E g what is that phi naught we will see in my, my next discussion and gamma in between the two. So, what we said is ideal theory it is phi m minus chi non ideal theory worst case gamma equal to 0 and it is depends it is independent of phi m and you get E g minus phi naught in between you get gamma is less than 1. So, something 0.5 times phi minus gamma 0.5 times E g minus phi naught like that. So, in summary that is what we are telling you can express it in this fashion the details of all these things how it comes up due to the surface states or interface states we will just discuss in our next presentation or complete details of that how to overcome that how to overcome some of these problems and how to use it we will see in the next presentation.